Hey folks, welcome back. I'm going to talk about a mistake I made uh, working on the uh, Ford 4.0 liter. It was this one happened to be in a 1997 uh, Ford Explorer. Uh, you know, everybody always talk about oh, it gets to the point. It gets to the point. Well, I got to set the table a little bit, or else you're not going to understand the point. So, anyways, uh, that engine came in here with a uh, timing chain rattle. It ran good, just had this horrendous rattle. And um, as you can see, what right here we've got a uh, <clears throat> driver's side cylinder head. This is not the cylinder head from that engine. We had that head repaired after I found um, what we found wrong. But our problem basically was the whole cassette in here for the timing chain that goes up from the jack shaft you know up to here and then the actual jack jack shaft timing chain um you know if you're not knowing what i'm talking about just look up other uh timing chain installation videos for the 4.0 liter and you'll be able to um figure out you know what i'm talking about there but that whole tension and all that stuff everything pretty much uh all broken apart um this particular all this front stuff and everything like that you can do uh while the engine's still in the car it's the one on the other head that you either have to pull the engine or uh i've also pulled the transmissions out before and replaced all the timing cassette and everything chain and everything for the other head um this one particular one um we went ahead and replaced all of this stuff here, put it all back together, started up and ran great. We didn't hear nothing. Um, they didn't have it in the budget to go ahead and do the other side. So at that point, um, that's where it went out of the shop. And then it came back, um, oh, it probably had to have been three, four or five days later, I really don't know. Um, had a miss and did a power balance test with the scanner because it's actually pretty accurate. Um, anything above, not in Ford's, anything above 97 seems like the power balance is pretty accurate. Uh, number five cylinder, that is the center cylinder right here um, on the left <coughs> head. And so I went ahead and just uh, pulled this valve cover off. Um, and this is how I found it. Everything, uh, this is, you know, this rocker or roller, whatever you want to call it was laying down in there exactly like it was. And so uh, didn't understand right then why we didn't, you know, had the low compression because you still kind of, even though that this valve, this is the intake valve here, it's not um, opening at all, but it's staying closed. It's not really letting any air in. So you're not gonna have great compression, but you should have some, but we had nothing and um so went ahead and actually uh said all right let's we need to figure out you know kind of what's going on here so i actually uh loosened up this uh timing chain here you know we put the engine over to uh top dead center um on number one down here with the crankshaft before pulling this apart uh pulled this uh loosen this up here like this and removed this camshaft put this roller back in place which is what I'm going to do right now. And um, that's when I found my mistake. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this, put this roller uh, back on, back in place so that I can show you uh, what it looks like. And that way, you know, if you have a timing chain issue such as we did, even though your engine was running good at the time, um you could still have some issues and that's kind of what we want to point out here with this so let's get this uh camshaft back off get this roller back on and i'll reinstall this camshaft just like it uh supposed to be and then i'll show you that again this isn't the head from that uh engine but it is the valve so i had that that head uh fixed basically and we and i just i kept this valve and so that valve is the one that was from that head. I just stuck it in this one, another one I had laying around the shop. That way I could just demonstrate this so that we could, you know, I could show it to you because it's, it's if you don't know to look for it, you're not really gonna notice it. But if you do notice to look for it, um, that way it could save you, you know, having to come back or, or having to do the job over again or whatever. Um, so, yep, let's keep on going. 
Okay, we got the uh, camshaft back in with the roller back in where um, it needs to go. And I just want to, we're going to look at each one of these. Remember that the, this one right here is our problem one. So let's see if you can see it. Go back again. Okay, if you can't figure it out, I'll tell you. See how this is sticking out? This, the, this valve stem, how much farther it's sticking out versus any of these other ones. So most likely that valve is bent, but you wouldn't really notice it. And then let's um, go ahead and We'll pour some water in here because that's one way you would, you know, you would, if you had a no, low compression issue or something like that, you can test, you can dump some water down this deal right here and see if water seeps out of here. Um, now, mind you, this valve does not go, didn't go into this head and I didn't do any, you know, <laughs> resurfacing or anything like that. So I have no idea uh, how well this is going to hold water if it is or anything like that it certainly looks like it's it is sealed up um as far as that goes um there was a point when i did not have any compression so uh you know don't know for sure what's uh you know it's probably because there's no air being brought into the cylinder um since like i said this is the intake valve anyways or because it's a bent valve and i'll show you a little bit here later on exactly how another reason why we probably had uh no compression and also why the roller fell off because that's pretty pretty easy to explain exactly how that roller fell off um, and how you could possibly have a uh, no compression issue in this particular cylinder so let's get these filled up with water we're going to go ahead and do this one and i guess we'll fill this one up here with water because i i believe i did this once before on i don't know we'll, we'll do it so Okay, so we got some water in that one. Got some water in that one there. You can see you can see how you can see the valve. Over here, don't see anything leaking quite yet. But look at that one. That's what they'll do if they leak. So, you know, you don't want it to be doing this if you're doing this particular test. But you notice that uh, this valve isn't. You know, and there is, I mean, definitely water in there. So based on this test, you wouldn't see that you have an issue. So now what we're gonna do is dump that water out, get this uh, camshaft back off again, and go ahead and remove the uh, valve spring. And um, I'll show you that, what the valve, looks like and what's doing there okay so we got this uh valve spring off of here now um, went ahead and did it on uh, this particular one this is that other uh valve i have this on the opposite way on this uh cooler than i had it before um, but this is the one that we other one we put water in it was leaking just thought i'd just be able to to uh show you this so right now you know <clears throat> valves are still in place now basically after you take the valve spring off of there you'll notice how easy that is to push and get out Ooh. I can't even do this one oh, man okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap this with a hammer and then I'm gonna drive it the rest of the way through with a punch get it out and show you okay i got this out of here now i don't know see how it's bent right about starting from right about here bent right there just a little bit not much i mean if you didn't look at this carefully you wouldn't really know I'm trying to do it the best i can but anyhow, and I don't know how it bent just up here. A lot of times when valves hit uh, 
you know, they bend closer in here and usually they bend out of, out of place so that when, when they go to, to go into their, their seats or whatever, um, they don't fit in here very good. And that way, um, I don't know, somebody who knows more about engines can maybe chime in and answer that one, but I don't, you know, I assume this probably happened during the time that timing chain was was loose, even though it sounded like the engine was running good, and the engine was running good at the time, um, but as you can see, with this valve installed on here, uh, when this thing was in here, you know, because I can get this to go in part way here, and then it stops right about there. Now, I can push it just a little bit. Now, to get it the rest of the way, I'd have to hammer it in there. That's how I got it in there in the first place when I took this valve and put it into this head. Remember, this isn't the head from that engine, but it is the valve. Um, and so basically, the spring is probably strong enough to sometimes close this valve. And therefore, that way, it was probably just fine and working until it got to the point where heat's different you know, engines warm or cold or something like that. This valve stuck open and that's what allowed that roller to fall off. And valve was probably open just enough to give us a, a no compression or the fact that maybe this valve was just not operating all, that there's no air to come into the cylinder as it's coming down. Therefore, you're not really gonna get compression. I mean, I'm not a engineer or anything like that, but it just seems like that makes sense, you know? So one of two things. Um, but you can definitely, as you rotate this around, see, watch it very right there on the end of that, uh, where that head bolt would go through. See, I mean, it's bent. It's definitely bent, you know. So, because really, um, if you're going to take, you know, these valves, basically you're just supposed to take your little pinky and just push it all the way in. There ain't no way that's happening, not even with my strongest thumb. Um, not happening with this valve. This valve is bent. So, um, basically, even though you had the engine running good and all that kind of stuff, um, I really should have, be, should have looked at those valves a lot more carefully um, to make sure that, you know, because when that timing chain, when we replace the timing chain, um, on that engine or yeah when we place you know did it the first time um that roller was still on there never did even take this camshaft off at all all i did was just uh remove all the old uh timing chain parts and we um uh sorry my mind got track of thinking about the phone message coming through anyways um Never did take this kind of, all we did was time it with uh, with the tool and, and all that stuff. You know, we put, had the engine on the top dead center and then we put the timing tool on this end and that end, you know, that special, you know, there's videos to show you how to do that because I have that tool. Um, Cause I've done other ones of these before. It's just this one, I happen to have this issue with not knowing that this valve was bent um, and or why it is i don't know it'd be awesome if somebody be able to tell me you know hey that's that's i've seen that plenty of times this this x or whatever chime in if you know um i don't know so anyways uh yeah when you if you have that issue that's why i want to put this video out and hopefully you know people will see it when um you've got that issue be able to check those valves check everything out make sure everything looks straight in there even though you did the water test on this particular cylinder with this valve it wasn't leaking this one was, because this is a bad head. I mean, this head needs, you know, needs to be fixed and redone, needs new valves, all that stuff. Um, but this one sealed good. So you're not gonna find it with that test. Um, basically, this is, this is all just about looking at it with your eyes, you know, because, I mean, it's easy now with the head off of here, I can really, you know, but when the head was still mounted on here and I put, that rocker you know back in place there and i put the camshaft back on and was like you know and then i even cranked it over a few times and that valve was working up and down up and down like it's supposed to and then i had compression too um it was just when i started looking at it a little more carefully i'm like that's not right i cannot have that bent like that and so had i have 
left it go out of the shop yet again, not really knowing what happened, um, it would have just probably fell off again. That rocker would have just, or that roller would have just fallen off again, or the valve would have got stuck open um, at certain times. And, you know, eventually probably could the piston could hit it or, you know, do something. I mean, there, you know, a lot of things could happen. This is an interference engine. So, you know, anyways, that's why we're, we got this video put out. Um, so hopefully this helps you out a little bit. And um, if you got any other ideas of how this happened, wherever, let me know. But anyways, thanks for watching.